Hi, I'm Molly Wood, and welcome to The Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everyone is talking about. This week, it's phones at the gym, Facebook's new privacy settings, again, and the invasion of the Walmart people. But first, it's the Gadget of the Week. The Gadget of the Week is the Motorola Droid Shadow. This little beauty looks to be basically the Droid 2, and the rumors are that it can be headed to Verizon this summer. It has a 4.3-inch touchscreen, which is huge, like the Evo, an 8-megapixel camera that takes 720p video. It's running the 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. It has 16 gigs of internal memory. And we know all these specs because supposedly a Verizon employee left the phone in a company gym. And the gym employee who found it knew enough to ask for the specs and then call a gadget blog. Yeah, nice. Lost it in a bar, left it at the gym. I'm sure the next big phone coming down the pike will just be left in a taxi that's conveniently headed for CNET's offices. Actually, could somebody make that happen? That would be pretty cool. We like a scoop. And now for the news. Facebook rolled out its simplified privacy settings this week and now hopes that we will all just quit our bitching and go away, please, because they heard us. We recognize that we've changed a lot of things, so we've spent a lot of time reviewing your feedback so we could address your concerns. The number one thing we've heard is that there just needs to be simpler ways to control your information. We agree. In a nutshell, Facebook's privacy settings are now all on one page. So that's good. You have more control over public information, and Facebook won't force you to make your interests part of a publicly available page anymore. And you can opt out of all the applications and websites that might be sharing your information without your knowledge. So you could just use Facebook as a way to communicate privately with a network of friends, just like the original plan. So here's how easy it is now. You just go to this one page under Privacy Settings, and then you can kind of choose from these presets. So you've got an Everything preset. You have Friends of Friends settings, a Super Private Friends Only preset. You have their Recommended Sharing settings, or you can totally customize. Oh, the application thing? Yeah, that's just kind of a little text link, like way down here. Because they don't really want you to turn that off. I mean, come on. In other news this week, the Department of Justice is reportedly looking into whether Apple unfairly threw its weight around the digital music business. Music industry sources say that Apple threatened to not promote songs if those songs were also promoted at Amazon. And since iTunes controls 70% of the digital music market, the DOJ is looking into whether Apple might have unfairly used its monopoly to squash competition, which I would argue is the entire point of having a monopoly, but I guess that's why we have laws. It's a fine line. Also in Apple land, the new iPhone is coming and they are clearing out the old ones. The 16 gigabyte iPhone 3GS is now $97 at Walmart with a new contract. That's right, iPhone's getting a rollback. Heck, almost any Walmart shopper could probably afford one now. Also, in preparation for the new iPhone, AT&T raised its early termination fee on smartphones from $175 to a whopping $325. Yeah! To be fair, Verizon charges even more, but somehow it doesn't seem so bad because of how if you have a Verizon phone, you can actually make phone calls and also get phone calls and send text messages. Stop me if you've heard this before. Okay, but come on, AT&T is trying. The company set up a Wi-Fi hotspot in Times Square, supposedly to relieve pressure on its network and to prepare for the flood of new iPhones that will stress that 3G network even more. See, but if the idea is that New Yorkers have a lot of iPhones and they're gonna buy a lot of new ones, then why put a hotspot in Times Square? I thought there weren't any New Yorkers in Times Square. Maybe it's for the Walmart people. And finally, let's have a look at what's clogging the tubes. This week, it's the oh-so-clever BP Global PR Twitter account. No, it's not a real BP account. But if you're going to make jokes about a horrible, ecologically disastrous oil spill, this is the way to do it. See, but it's not just mockery. Those clever devils also made t-shirts that they're selling for $25, and the proceeds from the shirt go to healthygulf.org. 
and that's how you do it. Pretty slick, guys. Uh, I get it because of the, yeah, no. I'll just leave that to them. And that's the Buzz Report for this week, everyone. I'm Molly Wood, and thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Molly Wood, and welcome to the Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everyone is talking about. This week, it's scurvy. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs>